Hello, this is Faith at Faith and Books, and um, I don't know about, I never know about the lighting. Whenever I start recording these things, I always wonder what the lighting looks like. The sun is going down rapidly. Um, I thought I would get to this sooner than I am, so I don't know. We'll see how this works. And this might be a little bit longer, this video, because I have to go through this stack of books, so I don't have to, but I'm, I've been doing these videos on my relationship with um, some nonfiction books for Nonfiction November, and the truth is, for years now, I have been compulsively collecting this particular type of nonfiction book, and it's... It's, I've confessed this before, that I'm a frustrated Latin scholar or student, I won't say scholar, um, and for years and years and years, a very long time, I've been trying to learn Latin and have been only partially successful. So instead of actually learning Latin, I neurotically collected lots and lots of Latin books and, and textbooks and curriculum. And which is, it's very easy to get addicted to the stuff if you're homeschooling because there's so much stuff out there now. Um, so I'm going to show you my collection. My And this isn't even all of it. There's, there's some of it that's still scattered around the house. So it's really, now that I've put it all in this big pile, which of course you can't see, it's, it's really kind of scaring me. I, I really think I have a problem. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you first the most treasured item of this whole collection, and that is this textbook. Oh no, let's see if I can, I don't have, let's see, yeah, okay. This textbook, very, very old. It is from 1893, 1893, and this was the Latin book for my great aunt Jenny Anstead, and she wrote here, uh, what did she write? December something, 1893. She wrote the date in this. And this textbook is, this is a real antique, a first Latin course um, by Dr., or by William Smith. By William Smith. So, 1893. So that's a really, I really treasure this. I love all the books that have been handed down to me from my grandparents and my parents, and I'm, I, I just get so attached to these old books. I wish I knew better how to take care of them and find them and all that sort of stuff. I should probably look into that. Anyway, this, I, I just love this, that my great aunt Jenny, I have her textbook from 1893. I just think that's amazing. Um, let's see, another old Latin book that I have, which I think of the copyright is 1928. And I think I bought this at an estate sale or something, but it's First Latin Lessons by, let's see, Scott and Horn. And this is a really nice, it's, it's in really good condition, and it's a really nice textbook. I mean, you could, you know, you could sit down and, and learn Latin from this um, today. I think it would be a really useful, helpful textbook. So I'm, I'm really proud of this one, too. Of course, have I used it? No. Um, so those are the two, my two oldest, the one that was owned by my, my uh, great aunt Jenny. Um, but I have just this crazy collection of books. So let me see, let me uh, show you some of these. Oh, it's really, really, I don't even know where to start. I really don't. Um, well, here, I'll start with this one. So this is Wheelox. I, I once joined this online group to study Wheelox together with these other people. Of course, I had, you know, five children and was sleep deprived and I d couldn't have time to, to devote to it. And so I soon dropped out. They were all people who were really language scholars. Wheelox is kind of the gold standard for Latin textbooks in, in America anyway. And I have this one, but I actually have three other books that are like supplements that go with it, a workbook and um, a reader, and there's something else too that I've got that goes with it. You can get flashcards that go with it and I've got it all. So, so this is just one, represent, one representative of the whole Wheelox collection. Yeah. 
Um, oh, I also have these. So this, these are really nice little stories that you can, you read the story in Latin and then it's glossed over here so you can understand any vocabulary that you might not be familiar with. Um, and it corresponds with Wheelocks. I use these when I taught Latin to seventh and eighth graders. Sometimes I would get students in, I, I taught the introductory, it wasn't introductory, they had a sixth grade introductory level. And then I taught the seventh graders and what I did was I taught the first half of Henley Latin. Um, that was what they did for seventh grade and then eighth grade you did the second half and then by ninth grade you were, you were doing more advanced Henley which was actually reading kind of a redactic, um, you know, Gaelic Wars by, by Caesar. Um, so, so when I had students that were a little bit advanced, like they'd had Latin before, and, and this was a little bit boring because they already knew some of it, I would use these stories uh, to sort of give them something extra to do that, that made it a little less boring for them. That was good. So these were really helpful and useful. I like those a lot. I've used them in, in various situations when teaching, like my own children. Um, let's see, what else? The, the uh, curriculum I'm most familiar with is Henley. Henley wrote this book in the late 40s, so it's got a lot of references to World War II. He was a Jesuit who eventually became president of Georgetown University in the 70s, I believe. Um, but he wrote this, um, and it's all to prepare you for reading uh, Julius Caesar's uh, Gaelic Wars. So, and that's, that was the typical progression. You would do a year of grammar and vocabulary, and then your second year, you would be reading um, De, De Bello Gallico, right? Um, so, so that's what, that's what he did too. And then he has a grammar, which is really useful grammar. He, he came up with really useful ways to remember difficult grammar things. Um, so this is a highly useful, even if you're not going to use his textbook, this really helps. Um, and then there's the answer key. But anyway, this is the program that I'm the most familiar with uh, because I taught it for several years, at least the first half. One year I taught the whole book, um, but most of the time I was just teaching the first half because we had um, another... Um, we had another uh, teacher at the co-op who was a real Latin scholar. In fact, he had even studied with the Vatican's um, Latinus, Father Reginald Foster. And you can Google that online and see, like, uh, news programs have done uh, interviews with him and stories on him. He's a real character. And for years and years, he was the Vatican Latinus. And... Um, he got sick or something, so he had to come back. I think he's in Milwaukee now. He's like the greatest Latinist living, and he gives free classes to kids in Latin. He doesn't he doesn't get any money or anything for it. He's living, I think, in a, you know, some sort of a retirement home. But a couple of his students, well, people who go and study under him, love him. Just absolutely, he's like the most brilliant Latin teacher that that's ever been. And so a couple of his students put together, and this just came out a year or two ago, uh, they put together his method into a textbook. He didn't use textbooks. He just, he just had sheets of paper that he made up and then he taught from them. Um, and it's called the Mere Bones of Latin or Osa Latin, I'm, I'm not gonna pronounce anything right because I'm I'm recording Latinitati Sola. I do know how to pronounce it, but I get tongue-tied when I'm talking into the camera. Um, anyway, I've actually started just reading this, just, you know, picking it up and reading through it. He, he's just such a character, and he's so brilliant. Um, this is a real treasure right here. Let's see. What else? I mean, I don't know what else to show you because... It's so crazy. There's so much stuff here. Oh, here I can show you this. So I've got these wonderful um, Latin translations of children's books. This is the Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The person who translated this actually gave it to Pope Francis <laughs> as a gift. 
those. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, this is a classic in Latin. And, and these books, they're actually harder to translate than you think. Uh, they're really... Uh, the language is actually a lot more complex than you think it would be. It's not like, a, you know, a, a, a reader where you're deliberately using limited vocabulary and only sticking to a particular tenses. These are actually more, more complicated. Uh, and this is my favorite, Fernandez Tarus. I love this. This, is my, this was my, one of my favorite kids' stories anyway, and I love that it's in Latin. It sounds beautiful in Latin. It really does. This, this was a book by my, that my aunt owned, and I, so Winnie Ile Pu. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not going to, are you going to be able to read that? I'm never going to be able to read that. Uh, but it's fun to have. This was a, this was a fun thing that I would give my students sometimes, keep them from being bored. It's, it's harder. I mean, some of them took right to it, and some of them really got flummoxed. Um, but this is this was a nice activity to have. I would just copy them, probably not legal, and share them with the kids. Let's see. Oh, this is another book I got from my aunt, Amo, Amasamat, and more. This is an older paperback. The Introductions by William F. Buckley, Jr. That's a good book. Let's see. Oh, this is... When I took Latin... With my teenagers, the uh, woman who taught us used this program, which is actually an Episcopalian program, I believe. Um, and I think this printing company has since been bought up by another company. Um, but this is just bare bones. They just give you the grammar and then the exercise. So it was pretty boring. Um, but she, she rounded it out by... Um, using this. This is a reading program. This was my son Joshua's. But this is a reading program that is really, uh, um, what's the, what do they call this kind of uh, way of learning language? It's like immersive. Like you figure it out. You figure out what the meanings are from the pictures and the little clues on the side. And then you just keep repeating and repeating and then slowly folding in new vocabulary and new concepts. Um, we didn't get very far in this, but a lot of people absolutely love this. And this is an international text that many, many people in many countries, um, Hans von Orberg wrote it. So, I don't know, was he Danish or something like that? But he was also a very well-known uh, Latin scholar. And this is a very po popular program throughout the world. My Latin teacher also published kind of self-published these books, which I think she sells at various conferences, Understanding Latin Prayers of the Rosary. I've also got her other, where is that? I've got her book on the Mass, Understanding the Novus Ordo Mass. Um, so she's a lovely woman <coughs> who's become a good friend. Um, let's see, what else have I got here? And then, I don't even have... The book, um, a few years ago, I took an online class from Catholic Distance University, and um, I and that was Ecclesiastical Latin, and I don't know where I put the textbook, but um, I, was so, I was so busy that year, and I was taking some theology classes as well, and I, I just overbooked myself. I just, I just couldn't keep all the balls up in the air. And the Latin final was coming up, and I wrote down the wrong day for when it was. It was a day earlier. And so I was putting aside time to, like, really... I started off in the class doing well, and then my grades were getting just lower and lower and lower as I went along because it was new material, and I was really overwhelmed. And um, so, uh, so that was just... I think I got an 84 on the final. I had to take it a day earlier. I'd, I'd set aside time to just cram. Like I was going to just spend four or five hours just going over everything. And I couldn't do that. And so I had to muddle through it. It was so humiliating. <laughs> that was my last formal Latin experience. But anyway, when I was um, taking that class, 
I'm just so compulsive. I had to buy all these different things. I've got a dictionary of the Psalter. So this one is really, I mean, it's this old kind of print. Look at that. I can barely read it. Um, and then I got Consecrated Phrases, a Latin Theological Dictionary. I mean, you can't really see anything from these. And then a Dictionary of Ecle Ecclesiastical Latin. So, I mean, what's neat about being Catholic is Latin is still a somewhat living language because um, the encyclicals are all written in it, or at least translated into it. And, uh, and there is the Latin Mass and scholarship of, you know, Thomas Aquinas and all those people wrote in Latin. So you do have to, you do have to learn Latin at some level. Um, then I just have these various Latin grammars. This is a famous one. This I got from my aunt. Uh, this is a really, really useful one, looking up all the verbs. Um, and let's see, what else do I have? This is something, this is actually a unit study that I printed out that I never used. Latin Roots of the Catholic Religion. <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful. It's a really fun, you know, kind of unit study thing. But, I mean, I didn't need it. I wasn't going to use it. I, I'm really compulsive. Uh, let's see. This is a really interesting one. This is like from the 70s, Latin via Ovid. And, uh, I, but the, I really like this. Actually, I started to study with it. You can see where I stopped. However, I got to a certain point where I really needed the answer key. And it's an old textbook. I don't have the answer key. So, let's see. Oh. This, is, this was another fun thing that I used a lot with the kids. It's Aesop's Fables in Latin. That's really... That's really fun because they, they know the story, so it's easy to figure out. And then we have a glossary that goes with it. So this was, this was a fun and useful. And where did I get this from? So much of the stuff that I, that I used was um, self-published or it was um, published by small, um, small publishers. I mean, it's, I have a lot of really obscure stuff. Let's see. All right, I think I'm just, this is going to bore people because, I mean, nobody cares about this stuff but me. But this, these are really cute little first readers. These are much easier to read um, when you're just starting out. This is, um, see, I have the lights so low I can't read. So, Bolchazi Carducci Publishers, and they're a great um, classical language publishing company. And they have these cute little books. So, Quid Edom and Quis Mi Amat. Uh, let's see. I, I can't go through all this stuff. It's just too much. But this is a great thing that was self-published. I think this guy published it on Lulu. And it's I Speak Latin, Latine Locor, uh, by Andrew Campbell. And this is all scripted. So, it's for little kids but it just has the script that the teacher would use and even the pronunciation. I mean, this is, this is really good if you wanna teach little kids. The trouble is, if you teach little kids and you don't really know the language yourself, they can't get anywhere, you know? So I don't, I don't really approve of teaching really little kids. I mean, I think it's fun to expose them to it, like let them learn some prayers and songs or hymns or you know some easy vocabulary, that sort of thing. But I think you should wait until they're like seventh grade, and then they're, then they they have English under their belt. They can read, they can write. They're starting to get the hang of spelling, and they have some idea of grammar. And then you introduce Latin because I think it just takes it way too long to learn it if you start it when they're really young, and you just do a tiny little bit. It's just it bores them. Um, so I don't think that works. But anyway. All right, should I give up? Uh, let's see, I feel like I don't have everything here. It's crazy. 
Anyway, the last couple of things I want to say are, first of all, this, this is a really interesting textbook, Ecce or Ecce Romani. Um, this was the uh, textbook that my son, who, who decided to try out high school, so he went to high school for, for ninth grade, um, uh, they used it. Did they use that or did they use Cambridge? They might have used Cambridge and maybe I... Well, anyway, I can't remember. But anyway, what's interesting about this book is that this particular teacher, right here, where is she? Sure, all her, she was a very, very beloved Latin teacher in the public school system here. And in fact, she sort of single-handedly, you know, just by word of mouth, because the students liked her so much, um, she kind of revived Latin. And this was back in the, you know, 70s and 80s. Um, when it had really fallen out of favor. Um, and her children all went to my high school. And unfortunately, her children all had cystic fibrosis. And I think they all died young. Maybe one lived? I'm not sure. But my high school is famous for putting on um, a dance where, uh, what do they call it? Oh, I can't remember now what they call it. I mean, I participated in it, where you dance for 12 hours and you raise money for cystic fibrosis. And it was because of this woman, Maureen O'Donnell. And if you, if you know anything about the National Latin Exam, it's, uh, it comes out of the University of Mary Washington, which is in uh, uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. And um, uh, like I think in this textbook, at least four of the people here on the, um, the author's list, um, maybe five, are from my area, Northern Virginia. There's, there's just a strong uh, Latin uh, academic culture here. And, um, and that's why the National Latin Exam is here. And it's partly because of her. And this is a really good textbook to use if you're going to take the National Latin Exam because the type of stories and the vocabulary and everything is, is really kind of pulled from this. It's very familiar. So uh, it's a popular textbook around here because it, it does work the best, I think. Cambridge Latin probably works pretty well, too. Also, my son was telling me that there's a Twitter uh, account for Eke Romani um, where all the students who took this textbook you know, write funny things about being stuck in a ditch and that sort of thing. So that's kind of funny. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I've buried myself <laughs> in books here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> um, is I want to highly, highly recommend this book. If you want to get started in Latin, it's called <laughs> Getting Started with Latin. It's by William Linney. I should link all this stuff before, uh, uh, d down below. But this is a really simple, just kind of brilliant in its, in its simpleness and clarity and, and how systematic and methodical it is. So it's very easy to learn, you know, just the beginnings of Latin with this book. And it's, it says, beginning Latin for homeschoolers and self-taught students of any age. You could sit and teach a third grader out of this book, or you, as an adult, could sit down and within a month or six weeks, you could complete this book, and you would be confident that you could tackle Latin. It's really, really well done. Um, and after you do this, he, if you look him up, William E. Uh, Linney, Latin, he's, he took an out-of-print Latin textbook, and he... he came up with audio lessons and I, I think he has answer keys and everything so you can teach yourself Latin using this and then going on to his courses now it's really dry and slow um, but if you want to learn it it's it's all there um, he does a good job he's very clear he's very gentle he's very systematic so I highly highly recommend this it's it's a really it's it's actually really fun and enjoyable it's, it's a really good program. Okay, I have so much more sitting here, and this isn't even all of it. So it's really, it's really sad how over the years, instead of actually learning Latin, I just accumulated books. It's really kind of pathetic. 
and I can't get, it's really compulsive on my part. It's really compulsive. Like whenever I would see uh, a new Latin curriculum or something, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. I would just get it. For instance, this, this is Jenny's first year Latin. This is also a very popular textbook that a lot of people used uh, over the years. And, you know, I bought it used because I saw it and I had heard about it. Anyway, so there is my sort of pathetic uh, confession about m my compulsive relationship with Latin textbooks. Very sad. Anyway, goodbye. See you. See you later.